Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my trigonometry tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about reference angles, finding angles in different quadrants, how trig functions relate, coterminal angles, and a whole lot more. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so a reference angle is just going to provide values that are needed to find another angle's value. And in this situation, this right here is our reference angle, okay? And I'm going to work through some examples and everything's going to make a lot of sense. So in this example that we have here in the upper right hand corner, just ignore the bottom part there until a little bit later, if we know these two sides are 8 and 6, then we can find the hypotenuse just by coming in and getting the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared, which is going to be equal to 64 plus 36, which is going to be the square root of 100, which of course means our hypotenuse is 10. Now, whenever you are working in these different quadrants, the sign for the length is going to be positive or ne negative depending upon which quadrant you are in. However, the hypotenuse is always considered positive. So, if you are in quad one, and this is quad one, this is quad two, three and four, remember? Well, in quad one, both horizontal and vertical lines for our triangles are going to be positive. If we are in quad two, then the horizontal is going to be negative, going this direction, that's what I'm referring to as horizontal, and the vertical going in this direction, so the opposite side for our triangle is going to be positive. In quad three, both are going to be negative. And for quad four, the horizontal is positive, going in the x direction, and the vertical is negative, going in the y direction. Now let me show you some examples here. It will all make sense. Okay, so if I want to find the, the value for x, or whatever that angle is, what I can do is I can take the leg opposite y and divide it by the hypotenuse. And if I do that, I'm going to have plus eight and plus 10 because the opposite is positive and the hypotenuse is always positive. So in this situation, I will get four over five. Now, if I come in and get the inverse sign of four over five, in this situation, I will get 53.13 degrees. But you're thinking to yourself, that can't possibly be the value of x because we know at least it's greater than 90. Well, that is based off of your calculator. And let me just show you here real quickly what is going on. So 4 over 5 is the same. 4 over 5, this is what I'm referring to right there, as 0.8. So if we draw a line here, Let's just start over here and just go the whole way across. Well, whenever you plug four-fifths into the inverse sine function, what it's actually giving you is this point right here. But actually, what we want is this point right there. So it's easy to correct that. All you need to do is just come in and get 180 minus 53.8. 1, 3, and you'll get 126.87 degrees, okay? So that's exactly what we are looking for. Now let's do the same with the cosine. So cosine of x, and you're going to see that this is giving you a different result. In this situation, we're going to have adjacent, remember, so katoa, that's how I remember these things. So hypotenuse. Well, in this situation, we're dealing with the adjacent, and this is negative in this situation. So this is going to be negative 6. Hypotenuse is always positive, which gives us a final value of negative 3 fifths. And if you go and put in the inverse cosine 
of negative 3 fifths, you get 126. And when I say whenever you go and get, what I'm referring to is you're using your calculator to find out what that is. Also, tangent, let's say, let's show you how this differs. This is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, which is going to be the opposite. It's going to be positive 8 over negative 6, which is going to give us negative 4 over 3, which if we get the inverse tangent of the negative 4 over 3, guess what? We get negative 53.13. And how we make that work is we go negative 53.13 plus 180 to get our final expected result right here. And of course, in situations in which you're dealing with radians, you're going to either add or subtract pi instead of 180. And this brings us to a point where it might be a little bit frightening to some people, all students take calculus, and I'll explain exactly what all that means. Now, the different trig functions are going to provide positive angles in the different quadrants, depending upon where the ray is in the quadrants. And how we remember this is with all students take calculus, okay? And that will tell us all we need to know. So everything works, or everything's positive, in the upper right hand or the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, just sines, and then in the third tangents and the fourth cosines. So I'm going to take this example right here, and I'm going to work through it. So to find y, what you're going to need to do is subtract 180, or pi, from x. So y is going to be equal to x minus 180. And then in our other example we have here, to find W, you are going to subtract S from 360. So there you go. So let's work through these examples. So let's take one example here first. Let's say if X is equal to 5 pi over 4, find Y. So let's go and first take 5 pi over 4, and let's just convert it into degrees just to make it something that is very easy. And to go and convert from radians to degrees, you just multiply times 180 divided by pi, which is going to give you 900 divided by 4, which is going to be equal to 225 degrees. Well, then what you have to do is you need to ask yourself a question. Where does this lie in our quadrants? Well, in this situation, we know that y is greater than 90, and it is less than 270. So that means it is in quadrant 3. Well, in that situation, y is going to be equal to 225 minus 180, which is going to be equal to 45 degrees. And then you can convert this back to radians if you'd like by just going 45, multiplying it times pi over 180, which is going to give you a final result of pi over 4. Okay? Now in our other example here, if s is equal to 11 pi over 6, and we want to find w, how do we do that? Well, let's just skip to the chase here. I'm going to have this be 180 times 11. I just canceled out the pies in my head. All right, six is equal to 1980 divided by six, which is gonna be equal to 330 degrees. And then we can find out what quadrant, if we do, we know that it is greater than 270 and less than 360. So it's in quadrant four. And in that situation, we know that W is equal to 360 minus 330, which is equal to 
30 degrees. And once again, we can say 30 pi over 180, which is equal to pi over 6 if we want to convert back to radians. And that is how we can find different angles depending upon other angles. And this brings us to the concept of coterminal angles. Now these are just angles whose terminal sides are the same ray. So this is the initial side where the angle begins and where it ends is the terminal. So initial and terminal. And what these angles do is they both terminate at the same ray. So let's come in here and do some examples. So in our first upper right hand corner one, if angle x is equal to 4 pi over 3 and angle y is equal to negative 2 pi over 3. Well, well, let's just convert them into degrees. So x is equal to 4 pi over 3 times, again, 180 over pi, cancel those out, you get 720 over 3, which is equal to 240. And then let's do the same for y. Let's do it a little bit of an abbreviated version here. So this is going to become the pi's cancel out, and it's going to be 2 times 180. So that is going to give us a negative 360 over 3, which is going to be negative 120 degrees. Now, if you subtract 360 from one coterminal angle, you get the other. And if you add 360, you're going to get the same. So let's do that. So if I have my angle X minus 360 degrees, that's going to be 240 minus 360 which gives us negative 120 degrees, which you see that works. Likewise, let's go angle Y plus 360 equal to, again, this is negative 120 plus 360, which gives us 240. And they both check out. Just be aware that angles can still be coterminal even if one angle is greater than 360. And let's take a look at an example where that works. So in the bottom right hand corner here, if we have angle X and it is equal to 17 pi over six, and we also know that angle Y is equal to five pi over six, well, let's go and convert these two degrees. So this is going to become 17 times 180. The pi is canceled out, of course. I didn't write them in there, which is going to be equal to 3060 divided by 6, which equals 510 degrees. See, greater than 360. And likewise, if we have y equal to and let's convert this as well, canceled out the pies, and this is gonna be divided by six, which is gonna be 900 divided by six, which is gonna be equal to 150. Well, let's come in here and check these out. So if I have X minus 360, well, that is gonna be equal to 150 degrees, and likewise, if I have angle Y, plus 360, guess what? That is gonna be equal to 510, and we know that in both situations, they are coterminal. So there you go, guys. Whole bunch more information on trigonometry, and like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.